Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and welcome to this video on acylation. And in this video, we're going to be looking at reactions with acid and hydrides instead. So in the um, another video that we've done, um, we looked at acid chlorides and actually the reactions of these and the mechanisms are going to show you are pretty much identical to acid chlorides. But if you want to know uh, about acid chlorides um, first or you're looking for that type of video then if you just click on the link below and you can have a look at that video there um, but for this video we are just going to look at acid anhydrides but just as a quick reminder um, acid chlorides remember have this carbonyl group here this C double bondo and that's that's the kind of type of chemistry it fits in uh, and it's also got this chlorine at the bottom now this makes it really really reactive if you imagine you've got an oxygen and a chlorine that's really electronegative and they are literally bonded to the same carbon in the middle and uh, this is going to leave this to be extremely delta positive and so this to a nucleophile which remember has a lone pair of electrons is incredibly attractive and so therefore it will react pretty quickly so we say that any reaction with acid chlorides in a nucleophile uh, are really really reactive um, the bad side though, in industry that's quite good, the bad side is they're quite corrosive, you don't want any of these on your hands because they really will kind of burn your hands. Uh, they're expensive and uh, actually the products they produce are harmful. Again, just look on the video to do with acid chlorides and you'll see what type of thing we produce. As opposed to this one, which we're going to look at in this video, which is acid anhydrides. Now if you look at the similarities, they're pretty similar. Um, except you can see you've, got, you've still got your carbonyl group there and your R group except instead of a chlorine we have an oxygen uh, and then this oxygen is then bonded to effectively another molecule another carbonyl group that's a mirror image of the one on the top so um, we just have this oxygen in the middle and for the purposes of this uh, at A level for your exam um, the R group are actually identical so that makes it easy for nomenclature when we come on to that in a minute um, I suppose the advantages with anhydrides over acid chlorides is they are cheaper, they're cheaper to use, so in industry that's quite good. Uh, less corrosive, uh, mainly because the electronegativity of two oxygens is less than the electronegativity of an oxygen and a chlorine. And also, some of the electrons in this oxygen are now being shared here, so actually this carbon isn't as delta positive as this one here, so that means they're not as reactive. You get safer products and um, also I suppose the downside though is these things are less reactive and because they're less reactive that means in industry you might need to use a catalyst, you might need to heat it up and that uses energy and that's cost so you've got to kind of balance these things up. Okay so what we're going to do we are going to look at the mechanism as I say they're very very similar and I'm going to show you an example, a worked example as well um, or an applied example should I say uh, which is um, aspirin. Okay so uh, what I've got up here I've got our um, our um, anhydride, our acid anhydride over here on this side uh, and you can see what we've got is two carbons. We'll start with the nomenclature first because I think at least if you know what it's, what it's called that would be a good thing. Um, all you do is you look at the two, you look at the number of carbons on one of the strands and you can see here we've got two carbons. So this is going to be eth, so it's going to be ethanoic anhydride. You might think that's a little bit weird because actually you've got two carbons up here as well and that adds up to four. And when you're naming anhydrides, providing they are uh, symmetrical, which you will get, in, that's all you'll get in at A level, and then you just literally name one band. So this is just two carbons on here, so this is ethanoic anhydride. And it assumes that the other band is obviously two carbons as well. So uh, we'll just call it ethanoic anhydride. Okay, and that's all you put on the end is you just put anhydride on the end. Okay, right, so let's look at the mechanism. So we'll put our delta positives and delta negatives on first. So just like what we've done over here, this is going to be delta positive, that's going to be delta negative, that's going to be delta negative, that's going to be delta negative, and that's going to be delta positive. Now, my nucleophile of choice is water. Um, you might be able to, or you, you may be expected to know, um, the reactions of um, alcohol as well. Um, which is very similar to water except you've just got a CH3 there, um, ammonia and a primary amine as well and again them reactions I've outlined uh, in the acid chloride video so you can have a look at all the different products there um, but the mechanism is identical like I say. Right so let's add our arrows in. So we've got a lone pair of electrons on our oxygen. This is going to go for a delta positive carbon. Now when we're forming a bond or when we're drawing an arrow we're effectively saying we're trying to form a bond. This carbon effectively has one, two, three, four, five bonds, 
far too many bonds for carbon, obviously it can only have four. Um, so it breaks the next weakest one. And the weakest one is the double bond. So one half of a double bond is weaker than a straightforward single bond. So that's why that one breaks. So in terms of bond entropy, so that's gonna jump onto there. And that effectively frees up the carbon and now it can just have four again. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to draw our intermediate. And now um, this bit, I'm gonna draw your attention to, uh, this one. I'm going to draw your attention to the actual name of the mechanism. This is called an addition-elimination reaction. So we add the molecule first, then we eliminate. And that kind of gives you a clue as to how you should draw it. So uh, let's draw it out here. So we'll put our uh, CH3. This bit's unchanged. The carbon bit here, we have an oxygen with a minus charge on the top because some of the electrons have jumped onto the oxygen. And um, we still have our uh, water that's been added on and it's the full water molecule um, and it has a positive charge because oxygen has got three bonds so it's got too many bonds around the oxygen the electrons have been spread out far too much so therefore uh, we have the positive charge on there uh, and then we just draw the rest of the molecule as normal so let's draw that there and carbon and three hydrogens all right, okay, so this is our intermediate. This is where we've added our water molecule. So now we have to eliminate. So we do this, obviously, by trying to get rid of some of these charges. So what happens is, we'll do this in blue. I had my blue pen before. Right, you can see that we've got our um, negative charge there. This will also have a lone pair of electrons, obviously, on the oxygen. And what will happen is the electrons from here will go back and it reforms the double bond, which is a bit weird because you've just broken it, but it, it does, it reforms the double bond. This carbon has now got too many bonds again, so it has to break another bond. Uh, and the bond that it breaks is this one here. So this bond breaks, and so now the electrons jump onto that oxygen there. And um, this bond has just been formed, so it is, it is far too strong. So that's the first thing. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're then going to now, I'm sure you missed out an arrow. You can see your oxygen here, oxygen with your positive charge, with your two bonds, and this, uh, the electrons in this bond, or this bond, it doesn't really matter, go in to stabilize that positive charge. And that, what you're left with is a H plus ion, but you'll, you'll see, I'll show you. So this goes into there, and that will stabilize that positive charge. And so then what we do is we form our product. So we have, let's draw it up again. Let's put CH3. So that's that bit, that's fine. Carbon, double bond oxygen is still formed. We also have this bit. Now, this bit here is still there. So we have an O, but we have an H. Remember, we've lost one of the hydrogens. This has now been kind of released effectively. So now we only have OH left. We don't have a bond here anymore. So this is now going to be a new molecule. So this one is gonna be your three hydrogens there, plus your carbon, which is that one. We have our oxygen, which is over there, but remember that oxygen gained electrons, so we've gone from here over to here. So that now has a negative charge, and then our double bond oxygen. We also have this that we've just left, that's our H+, plus. that's effectively been kicked off the molecule. Now it wouldn't take rocket science really to work out that you've obviously got your O- minus and your H+, plus. these two, these two would obviously bond together, and they would form that. So what you formed is two acids, carboxylic acid. These are ethanoic acid, and they're pretty harmless. They're, they're obviously they're, they're slightly acidic, um, but they're nowhere near as harmful as maybe HCl that you produce in the hydrochloric acid. So the products are a lot safer. Um, these are a good way of making ethanoic acid and actually make two molecules of ethanoic acid for every one molecule of this. So if you're in the industry of making ethanoic acid, it's Good news. Um, right, okay, so the next thing, I suppose, is to try and apply it uh, and link it in. So this is a method of making aspirin. Um, aspirin is, a, is an analgesic, it's a painkiller, which is um, obviously pretty useful um, in medicine. Um, and it starts off in a very, very similar way to this. Um, we're using our acid anhydride, here, here it is here, this is ethanoic anhydride, same one as we used up above. Uh, and we're using this chemical here. Now, really the only bit which we're interested in this chemical is the OH group here. 
And this OH group acts in a very similar way to your um, water over here. There's a lone pair of electrons, goes in for the delta positive carbon, etc. And so because the mechanism, the setup is the same, the products are very similar, except obviously there's our ethanoic acid that we're forming. But if you see the difference, there's our oxygen, which is there. And this hydrogen will then eventually drop off. And then one half of this molecule will add itself onto there. And we form this here. And this is your aspirin. So it's going to put aspirin here. You can see this is effectively classed as an alcohol. It's not water, so we don't form a carboxylic acid. But when we react an alcohol with an uh, acid anhydride, we always form an ester. So um, this is our ester here, just like normal esterification reactions when you have an alcohol plus carboxylic acid. Here we have effectively like a carboxylic acid, kind of, and our alcohol. When we react them together, we form an ester, and that's what this is. So aspirin is just a type of ester, but we're only looking at the OH and reacting it with the anhydride. Similar mechanism, so you can see where the product is. It looks horrific because it's quite a big molecule, but that's how it's formed. Um, but there you go, there's your reactions of um, acid anhydrides. Make sure you know your mechanisms, make sure you can compare the two and know the advantages and disadvantages. Um, and with some examples as well, you need to know about um, aspirin and its uses as well. But um, that's it, bye bye.